Wake, for the sun is scattered in flight, the stars before him from the field of night, drives night along with them from heaven, and strikes the sultan's turret with a shaft of light. Before the phantom of false morning died, he thought a voice within the tavern cried, When all the temple is prepared within, why not the drowsy worshiper outside? And as the cock crew, those who stood before the tavern shouted, Open then the door! You know how little while we have to stay, and once departed, may return no more. Come, fill the cup, and into the fire of spring your winter garment of repentance flame. The bird of time has got a little way to flutter. The bird is on the wing. Perplexed no more with human or divine, Tomorrow's tangle to the winds resign, and lose your fingers in the tresses of the cypress slender minister of wine. So when the angel of a darker drink at last shall find you by the river brink, and offering his cup invites your soul forth for your lips to quaff, you shall not shrink. Why, be this juice the growth of God, who dare blaspheme the twisted tender as a snake? A blessing? We should use it, should we not? And if a curse, why then, who said it there? And if the wine you drink, the lip you press, end in what all begins and ends in, yes, think then you are today what yesterday you were. Tomorrow you shall not be less. Yesterday this day's madness did prepare. Tomorrow, silence, triumph, or despair. Drink, for you know not whence you came nor why. Drink, for you know not why you go, nor where. The vine had struck a fiber which about, as clings my be, let the dervish fly. Of my base metal may be filed a key that shall unlock the door he howls without. For some we loved, the loveliest and the best that from his vintage rolling time hath pressed, have drunk their cup around or two before one by one crept silently to rest. And we, who now make merry in the room they left, in summer dresses in new blue, ourselves must we be the couch of earth descend, ourselves to make a couch. For whom? Ah, my beloved, fill the cup that clears the day of past regret and future fears. Tomorrow? Why, tomorrow I may be myself with yesterday's 7,000 years. Whether at Nashib or Babylon, whether the cup was sweet or bitter run, the wine of life keeps oozing drop by drop. The leaves of life keep falling one by one. What? Without asking hither hurried whence? And without asking whither hurried hence? Many a cup of this forbidden wine must drown the memory of that insolence. Ah, uh, make the most of what we yet may spend. Before we too to the dust descend, dust into dust and under dust to lie, sans wine, sans song, sans singer, and sans end. Strange is it not that of the myriads who, before us, pass the door of darkness through, not one returns to tell us of the road which to discover we must travel to. Myself, when young, did eagerly frequent doctor and saint, and heard great arguments about it and about, but evermore came out by the same door wherein I went. With them the seed of wisdom did I sow, and with my own hand wrought to make it grow. This was all the harvest that I reaped. I came like water, and like wind I'll go. While all the saints and sages have discussed the two worlds so wisely, they're thrust like foolish prophets for them. Their words to scorn are scattered, and their mouths are stopped with dust. The revelations of devout and learned arose before us, and the prophets burned, are all but stories which, awoke from sleep, Hold their comrades and to sleep return. Some for the glories of this world, and some sigh for the prophet's paradise to come. 
Ah, take the cash and let the credit go, nor heed the rumble of a distant drum. The worldly hope men set their hearts upon turns ashes, or it prospers, and anon, like snow upon the desert's dusty face, lighting a little hour or two, is gone. Alike for those who for today prepare, and for those who after some tomorrow stare, a wisdom from the Tower of Darkness cries, Fools, your reward is neither here nor there. When you and I behind the veil are past, ah, but a long, long while the world shall last. Which of our coming and departure heeds as a seven seas should heed a pebble cast? Waste not your hour, nor in the vain pursuit of this and that endeavor and dispute. Better be jocund with the fruitful grave, than sad enough or not, or bitter fruit. For it is, it is not, Though with rule and line, and up and down, by logic I define, of all that one should care to fathom, I was never deep in anything but wine. With me along the strip of herbage strewn, the just divides the desert from the sun, where name of slave and sultan is forgotten, and peace of mind and his golden throne. Look to the blowing rose about us, blow a laughing, she says, into the world, I blow. And once the silken tassel of my purse tear and its treasure on the garden throne. And those who husbanded the golden grain, and those who flung it to the winds like rain, alike to no such aureate earth are turned as buried once and want dug up again. I sometimes think there never blows so red the rose as where some buried Caesar lay. That every hyacinth the garden dropped in her lap from some once lovely head. Yet, ah, that spring should vanish with the rose, that youth's sweet-scented manuscript should close, the nightingale that in the branches sang, ah, uh, whence and whither flown again, who knows? Each morn a thousand roses brings, you say? Yes, but where leaves the rose of yesterday? In this first summer month that brings the rose, Shall take Jamshin and Kaikobad away. Well, let it take them. What have we to do with Kaikobad the Great or Kaikoshru? Let Tsar and Worstel thunder as they will, or hate him and call to supper. Heed not you. Think, in this battered caravan's array, whose portals are alternate night and day, how Sultan after Sultan with his pomp abode his destined hour and went his way. A moment's halt, a momentary taste of being from the well amid the waste, and lo, the phantom caravan has reached the nothing it set out from. They say the lion and the lizard keep the courts where champs should glory and drink deep, and borrow that great hunter. The wild ass stands over his head, but cannot break his sleep. Miriam indeed is gone with all his rows, and Jamshid's seven ring cup, where? No one knows. But still a ruby kindles in the vine, and many a garden by the water blows. As then the tulip for her morning sup of heavenly vintage from the soil looks up, do you devoutly do the like, till heaven to earth invert you like an empty cup? And that inverted bowl they call the sky, we live and die. Lift not your hands to it for help, for it is impotently rule, says you or I. Would but the fountain of the desert yield one glimpse, if dimly, yet indeed revealed, to which the fainting traveler might spring and springs the trampled herbage of the field? And this reviving herb, whose tender green fledges the river upon which we lean, ah, lean upon it lightly, or who knows from what once love and limpid springs, unseen. A book of verses underneath the bow, a jug of wine, a loaf of bread, and thou, beside me singing in the wilderness. Ah, wilderness were paradise, see now. What? Out of senseless nothing to 
the loka conscious something to resent the yoke of unpermitted pleasure under pain of everlasting penalties if broke? What? From his helpless creature be repaid pure gold for what he lent him cross allayed? Sue for a debt he never did contract and cannot answer? Ah, oh, sorry trade. O oh, thou who didst with pitfall and with gin beset the road I was to wander in, thou wilt not but predestined evil round and mesh and then impute my fall to sin. Indeed, repentance oft before I swore. But was I sober when I swore? And then, then came spring, and rose in hand my threadbare penitence to pieces tore. You know, my friends, with what a brave carouse I made a second marriage in my house. Divorced old barren reason from my bed and took the daughter of a vine to spouse. And lately by the tavern door a gate came shining through the dusk in angel shape, bearing a vessel on his shoulder, and he bid me taste of it, and was the grape, the grape that can with logic absolute the two and seventy jarring sex dispute, the sovereign alchemist that in a trice life's leaden metal into gold transmute. As much as wine has plagued the infidel and robbed me of my robe of honor, well. I wonder often what the vintners buy, one half so precious as the stuff they sell. And do you think that under such as you, a maggot-minded, starved, fanatic crew, God gave a secret and denied it to me? Well, well, what matters it? Believe that, too. Would you that spangle of existence spend about the secret? Quick about it, friend. Perhaps a hair devised false and true, and upon what, pray thee, may life depend. And this I know, whether the one true light kindled the love, or wrath consumed me quite, one flash of it within the tavern caught, better than in the temple lost outright. I must abjure the balm of life, I must, scared by some half a reckoning taken on trust, or lured by hope of some diviner drink to fill a cup with crumbled into dust. For I remember stopping by the way to watch a cock thumping his that clay, and with its all obliterated tongue and murmur, Gently, brother, gently, pray! And has not such a story from a bold, down man successive generations rolled, of such a clod of saturated earth cast by the Maker into human mold? And if the soul can fling the dust aside, and naked on the air of heaven ride, what not a shame, what not a shame for him and his clay carcass, crippled, to abide? Tis but a tent, where takes his one day's rest, the sultan to the realm of death at rest. The sultan rises, and the dark pharaoh strikes, and prepares it for another guest. And fear not, lest existence closing your account and mine shall know the light no more. The eternal sake from that bowl has poured millions of bubbles like us, and will pour. And not a drop that from our cups we throw for earth to drink of, but may steal below to quench the fire of anguish in some eye there hidden far beneath and long ago. But if in vain, down on the stubborn floor of earth and up to heaven's unopened door, you gaze today while you are you, how then tomorrow, when you shall be you no more? As under cover of departing day, slumped hunger-stricken Ramazan away, once more within the potter's house alone I stood, surrounded by shapes of clay. Shapes of all sorts and sizes, great and small, stood along the floor and by the wall. And some loquacious vessels were, and some listened, perhaps, but never talked at all. Said one among them, Surely not in vain my substance of a common earth was taken, and my figure molded to be broke, when trampled back to shapeless earth again. Then said a second, Ne'er a peevish boy would break the bowl from which he drank in joy, and he that with his hand the vessel made would surely not in after wrath destroy. After a momentary silence spake the vessel of the morning, they sneer at me for leaning all awry, 
What? Did the hand then of the potter shake? Whereat some one of the loquacious lot, I think a sooth pipped and waxing hot. All of this a pot and potter, tell me then, who is the potter, pray, and who the pot? Why, said another, some there are who tell of one who threatens he will toss to hell the luckless pots he marred in baking. Pish, he's a good fellow, and will all be well. Well, murmured one, let some make or buy. My clay with long oblivion has gone dry. But fill me with the old familiar juice, methinks I might recover by and by. I think the vessel that with fugitive articulation answered once did live and drink. And ah, the passive lip I kissed, how many kisses might it take and give? So while the vessels one by one were speaking, a little moon looked in that all were seeking. And then they jabbed each other, brother, brother, now for the porter's shoulder not a creaking. Oh, make haste, the moving finger writes, and having writ moves on, nor all your piety nor wit shall lure it back to cancel half a line, nor all your tears wash out a word. But my calculations, people say, reduce the year to better reckoning? Nay, t'was only striking from the calendar, unborn tomorrow, and dead yesterday. A hair, perhaps, divides the false and true. Yes, and a single elf with a clue, if you could find it, to the treasure house and peradventure to the master, too. Whose secret presence through creation's veins, running quick silver light, eludes your pains taking all shapes from ma to mahi, and they change and perish all, but he remains. A moment guessed, and then back behind the fold, immersed in darkness, round the drama rolled, which for the pastime of eternity he doth himself contrive and act, behold. Ah, the threats of hell and hopes of paradise, one thing at least is certain, this life flies. One thing is certain, and the rest is lies. A flower that once was blown, forever dies. I sent my soul through that invisible, some letter of that afterlife to spell. And by and by my soul returned to me and answered, I myself am heaven and hell. Heaven but the vision of fulfilled desire, and hell the shadow from the soul on fire. Cast upon that darkness from which ourselves so late emerged from, shall so soon expire. We are no other than a row of magic shadow shapes that come and go round with a sun and lantern, held at midnight by the master of the show. But helpless pieces of the game he plays upon his checkerboard of nights and days. Hither and thither moves, and checks and slays, and one by one back in the closet lays. The ball no question makes it pays and knows, here or there it strikes the player goes. And he that tossed you down in the field, he knows about it all. He knows, oh, he knows. With earth's first clay that did the last man need, and there the last harvest sowed the seed, and the first morning of creation broke, the last dawn of reckoning shall read. Into this universe not knowing, or whence, like water, willy-nilly flowing. And out of it, as wind along the waste, I know not with it, willy-nilly blowing. Up through Earth's center, through the seventh gate I arose, and on the throne of Saturn sat, and many a knot I unraveled along the road, but not the master knot of human fate. There was a door to which I found no key. There was the veil through which I might not see. Some little talk a while of me and thee there was, and then no more of me and me. Earth could not answer, nor the seas that mourn, and flowing purple of their Lord forlorn, nor rolling heaven with all the signs revealed and hidden in the sleep of night and morn. Then of thee and me works behind the veil, I lifted up my hands to find a lamp amid the darkness, and I heard as from without, me within these blind. Then to the lip of this poor earthen urn I lean, the secret of my life to learn, and 
lip to lip it murmured, while you live and dream. For once dead, you never shall return. Ah, love, could you and I with him conspire to grasp this sorry scheme of things entire? Would we not shatter it to bits and then remold it nearer to the heart's desire? Would but some winged angel air to play, arrest the end of the world of fate, and make the stern recorder otherwise a register, or quite obliterate? Indeed, the idols I have loved so long have done my credit in this world much wrong, have drawn my glory in a shallow cup and sold my reputation for a song. Ah, with a great fading life will I, and wash the body whence the life has died. Then lay me in some living leaf by some not unfrequented garden side. That even my buried ashes such a snare of vintage shall fling up into the air, as not a true believer passing by but shall be overtaken. Yon rising moon that looks for us again, how oft hereafter will she wax and wane? How oft hereafter rising, look for us through the same garden, and for one in vain. And when like her, O Saki, you shall pass among the guests stars scattered on the grass, and in your blissful errand reach the spot where I made one, Turn down an empty glass. O thou, who man of baser earth didst make, and even with paradise devised the snake, for all the sin wherewith the face of man is blackened, man's forgiveness give and take.